Okay, good afternoon. So, um, some reason or other, the program cut out in the previous video. Um, it cut out very early on in the in the lesson without me knowing. So, um, I'm going to redo this. This uh, is done with no uh, uh, students present. Okay, so you won't hear any students talking in the background again today. So, we're looking at cycle test two. It was term two of 2022. <coughs> So the question says calculate, write the intermediate steps. So the intermediate steps is the, the show you basically need to show you calculation. Okay. So according to part mass brackets, it needs to be done first. 80 divided by 4 is of course 2 times 0 plus 14 minus 2 times 6. Now 2 times 6 and 2 times 0, so you sort it out. 2 times 0 is 0, so it's 14 minus 2 times 6 is 12. 14 minus 12 is 2. Okay, let's look at the next sum. In the next sum, in 1.2, we have 1 cubed. Now 1 cubed is 1 times 1 times 1 is 1, many root 3. Over the bracket needs to be sorted out, so 3 minus, uh, 4 minus is 1 plus 1 is 2. 1 plus 8 is 9, and 9 times 2 is 18. 9 goes into 9, that's 18 twice. Answer is all. The next one. Square root of 4 is 2 times. Cube root of 27 is 3. 2 times 3, of course, is 6. The next one, 7 squared, which is 49. 7 times 7 is 49. We need 14. The cube root of 64 is going to be 4. 49 plus 4 is 53. Okay. The next one. Number two, which is write down a number less than 100, which is neither prime nor a composite number. Okay? So less than 100, which is neither prime nor composite, is one more thing. It says use the ladder to calculate the prime factors. So it's 11025, so we know that 5 goes into here. Um, 5 goes into 10 twice, carry 1, so it's 5 carry none, 0. Is 10 is goes twice, carry 1. 5 goes into 5 goes into 10 twice, carry none, 0, and 1. And the 0, and 2 to 0, 5. Okay? So 5 goes into 22 is 4, carry 2, 5. Sorry, we're missing the sum up here. Let's go again. <coughs> so it's 2, 1, 1, 0, 2, 5. So 5 goes, 5 goes into 11 twice, carry 1. 5 goes into 10 twice, carry none. 5 can't go into 0, but it goes into 25, 5 times. I think that's correct. So 5 goes into 20. 4 times carry 2, 5 into 24, 5 goes into 1, 1. 3 goes into 4, 4, 1. 3 goes 1, carry 1. 12 is 4, carry 1. 3 goes 12 is 2, 7. 3 goes into 14, 4 times carry 2, it's 9. 7 goes 7, 7 goes 1. So, the right. The number 11025, which is 11,025, is followed as prime factors. It is 2 threes, 2 fives, and a 7. Okay. Just answer the door. Okay. Okay. Alright, so <clears throat> the next question says, hence, so you must use your previous answer. Your previous question's answer and write down the square root of 11,025 11, as products of its prime factors and then simplify. So that's going to be 3 squared times 5 squared times 7 squared. That is what 11,025 is equivalent to. So that would simply be the square root of 2 over 2 times, so it's 3 to the exponent 2 over 2. Uh, 5 to 2 over 2, 7 to 2 over 2. Okay, which now simply gives us 3 to the 1, 5 to the 1, up 7 to the 1. That is 15 times 7 is 105. 
Yes, Michael. Um, oh, sorry, Bob. She had a pause. No. Yeah. Sorry. No problem. All right, so um, uh, that is given at that point. Then it says <coughs> in 2.3.2, .2, the question says write down the highest common factor of 24 and 36. Now, many of us can see it's 12. For the learners who can't see it's 12, the factors of 24. Is one, two, three, four, um, six, <coughs> eight, um, nine, no, twelve, and twenty-four. Then the factors of thirty-six is one, two, three, four, six, nine, three times twelve. And 36. So as you can see, the highest common factor is 2. Okay, but as I said, it's worth one mark because it can just be removed from, from there. It says, write the lowest common multiple, the LCM, of 2 to the 4 times 3 squared times 5 times 7, and 2 cubed times 3 squared times 5 to the 4 times 7. So remember the note we made with regards to the lowest common multiple, <coughs> the LCM, we see for the lowest common multiple, the base does not have to occur in all of it, you take the highest exponent. So 2 is there, 3, the highest exponent is 2, 5 to the 4 is the highest exponent, and 7. So that is your lowest common multiple. In the next question, we are told, You know, with 2.4. Given that you have two numbers, A and B, the highest, so you've got two numbers, you've got A and we have B. The highest common factor of A and B is 2 cubed times 3, while the lowest common multiple of A and B is 2 cubed times 3 to the 4 times 7. Now I ask you if A, if they tell you A is 2 cubed times 3 times 7, the right hand B as products is prime factors. So remember the note we made that for the highest common factor, the base has to occur in all of it, and you take the lowest. So 2 cubed is the lowest. Okay? So that can either be 2 cubed or higher. Alright. But if you're looking at the lowest common multiple, here we also have 2 cubed. So, and, and 2 cubed has to be the, uh, uh, 3 has to be the highest on that. So it has to be uh, 3 cubed. If you're looking at the base of 3, we must consider 3. Why? Because that's in your highest common factor. So, um, then the lowest is of course 3 to the 1, which is there. So this number here can be anything. But the lowest common multiple is 3 to the 4. So here we will take the highest exponent, so that has to be a 4. For the highest common factor, if you're looking at the 7, there's no 7 by the common factors. So we are not going to consider that 7 in your B then. Okay. So your, your B value in products of its prime factors it's going to be three, uh, 2 cubed times 3 to the exponent. Okay. Look at the next one. <coughs> Question 3 says how many terms are there in each expression? So what separates terms? It's positive and negative signs. So it's 1, 2 terms. Then you get positive, negative. It's 1, 2, 3 terms. Terms on that expression. Again, it's positive and negative signs which separates terms. Okay, 3.2. You want to know which is the unlike term? Choose the correct letter. So we have one unlike uh, term there. So I want you to choose the correct letter there. If you look at the first one, it's um, 7x cubed y. 
The next one, if I simplify this, it will be 2 over 7 x cubed y5. The next one, that is 5 x cubed y5. All of this, as you can see, is like them so far. The next one is going to be 8 x cubed y5. I'll simplify that. And this is 3 x5 y cubed. So this one is the odd one. So therefore, the answer is E. The next question says, which is an expression? Choose the good, good letter. And of course, the expression is the one without an equal sign. Otherwise, the A is your equation. So the answer there is B. The next one, the next question, They ask you to write the degree of the polynomial. The degree is the highest exponent of x. As you can see, the highest exponent is 4. So it's fourth degree. Write down the coefficient of x squared, so the number in front of the variable, which is negative 7 over 2. Write down the constant term. The constant term is the term of the variable. It stays the same, so it's 8. Write down the exponent, or the index of the fourth term, Fourth term, the exponent is 1. And then the next question says rearrange um, the expression in descending powers of x. So descending powers mean from um, base to the smallest. Okay. Powers of x, the exponents that, that's given there. So the smallest, uh, the highest is going to be x to the negative. And x to the 4. But remember that that number, that term, is negative. Remember that the sign is part of the term. So it's negative x4. Then there's a positive in front of that, which is not written in that case. It will be positive 5x cubed minus 7 over 2x squared um, plus 7x plus 8. Okay? That's that. Next question. It says write an algebraic expression for the following. A number, eight times a number. So we don't choose a number like someone we chose one or three, whatever. We don't know the value of the number. So we let this number be x or y, whatever. I'm going to use x. So it's eight times a number. So it's going to be eight x. So either that or Next one, the quotient. The quotient is to divide the quotient of a number and 5. So x divided by 5. Next one is divide the sum of x and z. So sum is to add by 8. And then subtract from. So whatever follows from, we write first. So it's 4 minus x plus uh, z over 8. Or you could have written 4 minus x plus z divided by the bracket must be present. Okay. Next one, now we're moving on to question four. Question four says simplify. So when you're adding and subtracting, the variables stay the same. They are like terms in this case. So a plus a plus a plus a. So of course, 4a. b times b times b times b is going to be b to the exponent. Four. Now the next one, many of you are. At c to the 10 over c5 is going to be c to the 2. That is incorrect. Okay? We're not dividing the, the exponents. Remember when the bases are the same and we divide them, subtract the exponents. So c10 minus 5, which is 5. The next one, 2d minus 2. They are unlike them, so can't be simplified. Or you can write 2d minus 2. Both is acceptable. They are unlike terms, we cannot add them there. The next one, we are multiplying, state multiplication here. So e squared times f times f4 times ef times ef squared. e times e is e cubed times e is e to the exponent 4. f, f times f4 is f5 times f is f6 times f2 is f8. Alright, next. We are looking for like terms. The GH is the same as HG. Okay? Remember we said before that XY is the same as YX. A 
A B is the same as B A. Why? Because that's all multiplication. So 10 G H minus 9 G H or H G is going to give you G H, 1 G H. 6 I H minus 4 I H is 2 I H. Okay. Next one. Well, again, we're going to do polite terms. So H J five K squared, four K squared J squared. That is unlike terms. And negative J squared uh, K five makes those like terms. Remember that the exponent, the correct exponent, must be on the correct uh, the matching base. Thing. All right, as you can see, J is to the exponent 5, while K is to the exponent 5. Okay. So that would be 8J 5K squared. So K, a uh, 4K 5J squared minus 1J squared K5 will be positive 3K 5J squared. Okay. The next one, okay, and we can't add that again. Why? It's unlike this. Again, when you're adding, subtracting, the variable says that. So, the next one we need to use the distributive rule to get rid of the brackets. So 5m times 5m5 is 25m to the x6 minus. 5m times 3 is going to be 15m. Can I subtract them? No. Why? Unlike terms. The next question. We are given if a is equal to 2, b is equal to 3, and c is 2 thirds. Calculate the value of 3ac minus b over 3. Now many of you didn't replace the value of b with 3, and many of you just wrote it as 3, 2, c is 2 over 3, minus 3 over 3. Remember between those variables and the coefficient is multiplication. Alright, so that's over 1. So 3 goes into 3 once, 3 goes into 3 once. 1 times 2 is 2 times 2 is 4. So it's 4 over 1, which is 4 minus. 3 going to 3 once. 3 once is 1 over 1, which is 1. 4 minus 1 is 3. Carry on. 4.3. Take it down a bit. 4.3 says, determine the perimeter of the diagram. The perimeter is basically the sum of all the edges. Surrounding the object then on the outside. The perimeter is going to be 5 plus x plus 8 plus x plus 1. So what I did was I added all of these lengths up. So again, I must look for like this. So 5 plus 8 is 13 plus 1 is 14. x plus x is 2x. So it's 2x plus 14 or 14 plus 2x. Okay. The next one, and the last question, it's a bonus question. We are told that determine x in terms of, x of y if x is equal to 4 plus 2q and q is equal to y plus 6. So they want x in terms of y. So x must be x is equal to something with a y in it. So you, as you can see, a q is equal to y plus 6, and there you find the q. Can you see that? So x is equal to 4 plus 2 times q. And what is q? y plus 6. So it's 4 plus 2 times y is 2y. 2 times 6 is 12. So it's 2y plus, and those are of course like terms, 16. Alright, so that basically brings us to the end of um, the cycle test.